Hey everyone, I'm Victor Frost, and this is Steven Universe Universe, the show where we talk about the universe of Steven Universe. First things first, the news. So we have finally got a date for the Steven Universe Uncle Grandpa crossover special. The episode is called Say Uncle, and according to zap to it my favorite website for TV listings and the host of TV by the Numbers, my favorite television ratings blog, we're going to be getting it on April 2nd, 2015, 5.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, or 9.30 p.m. UTC, if you're an international viewer, I guess. I am personally really excited about this. I love it when two very different but also very good franchises just sort of come together to make something really great, like uh, Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton, or Detective Conan and Lupin the Third. Both really great examples of great mashups, and I'm thinking that this is going to be very much the same. And for those of you out there who are poo-pooing this mashup, I guess the only thing I can say is, well, have faith in the Steven Yu crew. They haven't let us down yet. So, Steven Universe fandom, let's see what you guys have been up to. It's time for a review. This week, we're going to talk about The Game by Connie the Cat. This is a fan fiction in progress, and the premise is as such. Steven has started a game of truth or dare between himself and the rest of the Crystal Gems. Each chapter is more or less one round, and up at this point, there are four chapters. Now, the writing quality is pretty basic. No real errors, but also nothing to really make it pop either. And normally, I wouldn't even be reviewing a work in progress, except this isn't so much a fan fiction as it is a fan game. See, instead of writing the story entirely on her own, Connie the Cat decided to do something novel. She turned the reviews section of her fanfiction.net post into a sort of comment box where people could give suggestions as to what the characters should do next. She then takes those suggestions and figures out which one she wants and integrates it into the story, turning it into almost like a game, like a wonderful mix of fan fiction and Twitch Plays Pokemon. Okay, Google. Note to self, Twitch Plays Notepad. Saving note. Hmm. So, what's the verdict? I'm going to give it 4 out of 5 Stevens. Now, the writing is nothing special, but the novelty of a semi-collaborative fan fiction with a setting and a plot that is not only very flexible, but lends itself well to high comedy is great. I recommend you all go check it out, and if you feel so compelled, put a suggestion in there. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this one, so I'm going to be looking out for some of you guys out there adding to the fun. I can't wait to see what happens next in the story, and I do hope you guys go at least check it out. So now's the time for us to look at the newest episode and see what we learned. If you haven't yet watched the episode Joyride, now's your chance to pause this video, go watch that one, then come on back. Don't worry, we'll wait. This is your spoiler alert. So, new episode, new lore. Let's see what we learned. Okay, so first things first, time for me to eat some crow. I called the end of season one way too early. I mean, we still got a handful of episodes left and we are still dealing with the immediate ramifications of the Steven Bomb arc. Well, we're not, but Steven is. In the show, past the drama and the fighting and the superpowers are people. People with love and fears and personalities and interests. They live in a world that is constantly evolving and becoming richer. And one of the things that makes this show great is that they are constantly being affected by the world and what transpires in it. Recently, Steven has become much, much more involved in his role as a crystal gem. He's become incredibly more aware of the truth of the world around him and has asked for more responsibility and it's been given to him. This, all of this, has started to wear Steven down. 
When you have stress that is so tied to a certain context, be it your school, your job, your relationship, your family, whatever, it can be hard to talk about that to someone who's also within that context. They have just as much invested in the situation as you do and can lack a certain objectivity. Having friends that you can talk to outside of that context is a great thing because you can talk about it freely with them and get a good outside perspective. With Steven, the cool kids thought they'd be getting a much needed counterpoint to their cynical worldview. But in reality, they ended up providing a much needed counterpoint to Steven's hyperinflated sense of responsibility and duty that ultimately undercut his previously healthy level of childlike lackadaisiness. Seriously, Steven, you've been under a lot of pressure. Don't you think you deserve to have a little fun? Steven chilling out aside, we see that he thinks that the gems possibly in some way resent him for them losing Rose. This is a popular idea in the fandom, so I'm interested in seeing how it plays out in the show. We also see that Steven has gotten pretty strong, handily lifting and moving Jenny with little effort, possibly indicating that his uh, abilities as a gem extend a bit further than we thought. Where Peridot is concerned, though we don't see her in this episode, we do find her escape pod, which shows us that she did not in fact land in Moose Country, but here in Beach City. We also see that inside the escape pod, Steven was able to breathe that same sort of gel liquid that seems to be coming out of the plub robinoids when Amethyst smashes them, or basically when anyone smashes them. Now, whether this is another gem ability or if this liquid is an oxygen-rich liquid, meaning that he'd be able to breathe it with human lungs, we don't know. But we do see that this escape pod is seemingly armed to the teeth, which is a bit of a deviation from what most escape pods are typically done with, at least in most other science fiction you know, or fantasy genres. And finally, we get to see Steven get his television privileges back, and quite possibly, the first Crystal Gem selfie. Maar eerst even lachen naar mijn selfie. And that's what we learned this week on Steven Universe Universe. Join us next week where we talk about the episode Say Uncle. I'm Victor Frost, and instead of fading out to the title card, I was actually at HanadokiCon this past weekend, and I saw a really good Rose Quartz cosplayer. So, I thought we'd fade out to that. Anyways, I'm Victor Frost, and I'll see you next time on Steven Universe Universe. <laughs> <laughs>